Tonight on Win, following the Late Show. All the Hollywood gossip on Entertainment Tonight. Then at 2.15, your late movie, Ebb Tide. <laughs> Teachers hold crisis talks as vandalism spirals out of control. The region's road toll climbs after the death of a motorcyclist. And a South Coast man pleads guilty to 11 child sex offences. We News Late Edition with Jeff Phillips. Good morning. Teachers at Oak Platts High School want Education Minister John Aquilina to explain why a $150,000 security fence has been dropped from the budget. Vandalism has cost the school half a million dollars in the last four years alone. Break-ins have cost the school its canteen. Students forced to line up in the open to be served through a classroom window. It's just the latest in a string of attacks stretching back more than four years, which includes 865 smashed windows, one for every student at the school. 170 windows smashed here in the last four or five weeks. Uh, we've lost our canteen, as you can clearly see behind us, running out of a temporary premises. We found asbestos where the, uh, the vandals broke in, so that added another problem to the school. My biggest problem is trying to manage financially, and at the moment, uh, unfortunately, I just can't cope. We just don't simply have the money. There's certainly nothing here for security. Uh, when the school's constantly forking out the money to replace windows, doors, roofs, stolen computers, uh, the list just goes on and on. And it's not students doing the damage. In the majority, they're not kids. Uh, they're probably, uh, from what I've been able to ascertain, um, unemployed uh, local youths who really don't have much else to do. Teachers angry a security fence promised two years ago has disappeared from the budget. Let's say 150000 to really fix the security here to save the taxpayer half a million. It's got to be good maths. Alan Clark, Win News. The region's road toll has climbed to 23 following the death of a bombardery man overnight. It's believed the 32-year-old motorcyclist died after failing to negotiate a bend on Bolong Road. The victim was thrown from his bike after it hit the kerb, his helmet torn off in the crash. The bike and helmet coming to rest more than 30 metres from where the body was found. The crash investigation unit is continuing with its inquiries and haven't ruled out speed as a contributing factor. The man's name has not yet been released. A Nowra man has pleaded guilty to 11 child sex offences in Nowra local court. Former security officer Christopher David Myers pleaded guilty to the sex offences committed on five boys. Myers was charged two years ago after a lengthy investigation. The boys, now all aged in their teens, are helping authorities with their inquiries. Myers will be sentenced in Nowra court next week. Talks are being held tonight to try and resolve a protracted dispute which is threatening to disrupt TAFE classes throughout the Illawarra. Teachers and students are outraged at cutbacks to library services. Teachers and students at Dapto TAFE held classes in the library this morning before discussing the problem at a lunchtime meeting. The campus's library, one of the hardest hit, TAFE cutting its services back from five to three days operation. Teachers and students now restricted in using the vital service. Our part-timers don't have, have access, they have to work during the day, uh, so when they come in at night, the library's closed, so when do they um, get a chance to attend the, the library and get access to those uh, facilities? More than 1,000 students use the library, with teachers basing most of their courses on material available in the facility. Coming back, there's a noticeable uh, difference in uh, resources and so forth. There's almost, you get the feeling that we're being wound back, and uh, we just don't know why. A report back will be given to teachers tomorrow. Further industrial action not ruled out. Colin Duffy, Win News. The Dendrobium Commission of Inquiry has been given a first-hand look at the Sydney water catchment system, which it's claimed is threatened by the massive BHP billet and development. Commissioners and an entourage of 20 in four-wheel drives access the rugged catchment area under which proposed Dendrobium mine workings will pass. Issues raised include the potential impact on hanging swamps, which slow feed the numerous streams that make up the Sydney catchment system, which provides Sydney and Illawarra drinking water. Another concern, potential subsidence and cracking, which conservationists fear will affect water supply as well as flora and fauna that rely on it. 
The federal government has ordered an immediate review of Centrelink just days after it conceded new systems designed to catch social security waters are trapping vulnerable job seekers. A damning report shows an almost 200% rise in the number of penalties imposed on the unemployed in the past three years. A new report says in the past year Centrelink breached 350,000 of Australia's most vulnerable people. The homeless, mentally ill, illiterate, young and indigenous. The investigation by the Australian Council of Social Service has also revealed people are being tripped up by even tougher activity tests or failing to turn up at appointments. And rule infringements are attracting far bigger penalties than before. West Wollongong's Phils Kotromanovic says he's a victim of the system. On unemployment benefits since losing his job laying pipes at the end of June, he's been breached by Centrelink for allegedly failing to meet requirements. I went in for the interview. Now, what they want to do is to breach people because of their own incompetence. With a mortgage hanging over his head, he says he's desperately seeking work. Unable to afford mortgage repayments since his $322 a fortnight payment was cut by almost $60. Put me under a lot of strain. I've been on the phone today, the boss of um, the mob that I'm working for, he's rang me up today, this morning, and uh, I should be going back to work in a couple of weeks. Catherine Lord, Win News. The Wollongong Sports Ground Trust had one million reasons to smile today as preparation work started on the multi-million dollar Northern Grandstand. Wind Corporation handing over a cheque for one million dollars, the first of four instalments that will ensure NRL matches remain in the city. Yesterday's house full sign for the Dragons Broncos match with only 13,000 fans packed into Wind Stadium highlighted the need for expansion. Wasting no time today, trust representatives and Wynn executives sat down Australia's biggest regional television network putting pen to paper for their four million dollar commitment to the facility. Wynn lobbying the government in dollar for dollar funding after it was feared the Dragons could be lost to the region. Uh, we put a deal to the government if we uh come up with half the money, will they match it dollar for dollar? And after many months of negotiation, uh, the government was able to facilitate uh, that. The new 6,000 seat stadium, which will join onto the entertainment centre, is expected to be completed by March of next year. Without the contribution from Wynn, uh, we would not have been able to proceed with the development of the Northern Grandstand, and the implications of that are just too horrendous. Wynn will retain naming rights for the next 25 years with a new name for the Entertainment Centre to be announced shortly. Colin Duffy, Wynn News. Coming up next on Wynn News, state government moves to abolish regional waste boards under fire and a major police and state emergency services operation at Jervis Bay. State government moves to abolish regional waste boards are under fire. The controversy surfacing at the opening of Windsor Caribbean Shire's new $3 million resource recovery centre. When news revealed last month the problems being faced by Highlands Waste Services over materials recycling. Windsor Caribbean Council unable to let a new contract following the dumping of waste management boards. This hiatus will mean in reality that effective policy will be stalled and that it will take considerable time for Resource New South Wales to find its feet and gain the confidence of key stakeholders. Not that it stopped Windjikarabi Council from addressing their long-standing need for a new waste facility. We've actually found a plan of 1984 uh, which actually showed a proposed transfer station on this site. So it was the Wellby Waste this, uh, Depot had obviously passed its used by date and was being called even at that stage Mount Wellby and we had to find an alternative site. Recycling Mossvale Tip as a resource recovery facility. We recover here, we think about 50% of what's brought in in the way of waste. We either recycle it, reuse it, and of course the putrescible waste is, is taken elsewhere. Council planning to compost putrescibles in an enclosed building on site, giving residents and businesses an incentive to cooperate by sorting waste. Either uh, free for some of the sorted waste or, or, or a third of the price, in some cases up to a half the price of, of the mixed waste rate. Alan Clark, Wind News. The South Coast building industry has opened its heart in an extraordinary display of generosity for a new autism school. The new school will provide specialist education services to young sufferers. 
While children with autism may appear perfectly normal, they require intensive assistance to develop social and communication skills. Is that the dog? A 10-student specialist unit has been set up in Nowra to assist children make the giant leap into ordinary primary school. The thing is with these children, they're always going to have to adjust to new things. It doesn't stop once they get to mainstream. And um, with the goodwill of teachers and the school that the child's enrolled in, they can make excellent progress. While currently operating from temporary premises, a new school is nearing completion in the grounds of Nowra infants. Thanks to donations of material and labour, a building which was going to cost $80,000 has almost been finished for twenty-five. 95% of the labour has been donated, which we're very grateful for. Most of the materials used have been donated as well. Most children will stay with their specialist teacher for two years. But already in the short time the school has been operating, some of the kids have started making progress that their parents once only dreamt of. All going to plan, the new school here should be finished by the end of the month. And when it's fully operational, it'll cater for students from Berry through to Bolladulla. Graham French, Win News. An irrigation project unveiled in Dapto today is set to stop polluting or pollution entering Lake Illawarra while also providing an improved playing surface at Reed Park. Wollongong City Council is undertaking the project in conjunction with the Commonwealth Government grant. The work involves the diversion of stormwater for reuse on Reed Park's three sporting ovals. A pond will capture pollutants which would otherwise find its way into Mullet Creek and ultimately Lake Illawarra. Work on the project, which is expected to cost $700,000, will be completed in August next year. Jervis Bay was the scene of a major land and sea rescue operation at the weekend. The training exercise involving more than 120 emergency services personnel. The three-day multi-agency training exercise brought together the New South Wales Police and Ambulance Service, Coastal Patrol, SES, Rural Fire Service and Shoalhaven District Hospital. This is an annual exercise that we run every year within the Shoalhaven. Um, it's all part of building up our networking skills between the agencies and testing our plans to make sure that they are effective and that they work properly. The exercise designed to test each service's own rescue procedures and how they interact in critical situations. We have to practice our techniques regularly so when we're all called upon to respond to a real emergency we are prepared to do so. The mock rescue centred in and around Jervis Bay, taking in Greenpatch, Bristol Point and HMAS Creswell. The operation designed to hone their skills on land and water. In the future when we do have a search operation or an emergency situation, we can all work together. We know what each group does and we can perform much more professionally. The three day training exercise proving a hit with all involved. It's excellent, it really is. It's, a, it's an opportunity that I think everyone should be involved in throughout the year, it's great. Brett Rodwell, Win News. Briefly in other news, a recent blitz of shops in Nowra has uncovered 99 breaches of New South Wales industrial laws. Department of Industrial Relations inspectors made random visits to 28 local shops and inspected the time and wages records of 195 employees, including 68 juniors. A community workshop is being held at the Naruma Golf Club tonight to allow residents to have their say on the future of the Dalmini camping area. And a veteran partnering certificate has been presented to Southern Highlands Private Hospital in recognition of its commitment to the veterans community. On the stock market, negative territory today. BHP down 6 to $9.30. The AMP lost 29 to close at $18.69. Telstra down another 8 to $5.09. And the unlisted IMB put on one cent to close at $2.58. Time for sport with Matt Russell and the Wollongong Hawks. Hey, they're back. Jeff, the pre-season is underway. Also at the rules, Carlton League romp and Craig Smith charged again. Dragons prop Craig Smith has possibly played his last game in Australia. The England-bound Dragon has been charged with a Grade 3 striking offence following a tackle on Brisbane halfback Kevin Walters. It's a massive blow to the Dragons' finals push, Smith facing a five-week suspension. The tackle in question occurred in the 11th minute with Walters taking no further part in the game. The Brisbane 5'8 left nursing a fractured nose and eye socket. The Dragons prop today pleading his innocence. 
I don't think there was anything illegal in the tackle at all. Um, I think it may have been just, just how the, the impact happened that uh, he sustained his injuries. It looked like, I feel sorry for the boat for having injuries like that, but like I said, it's a contact sport and these things happen. From my point of view, I, I suppose um, I got an injury out of it, but I don't know if there's any malice in the tackle or whatever. In front of just over 13,000 fans, it was an emotional Wollongong farewell for Dragons trio Paul McGregor, Andrew Hart and Craig Smith. The 20 points to 18 victory, a perfect send-off. A big bunch of bunch of footballers there. there. There was a tear in nearly everyone's eye before the game. So I guess we played the game on emotion. I think that's what got it through us through in the end. All three played starring roles in the match. Second rower Andrew Hart crossing for the Dragons first six minutes from kickoff. Despite a Brisbane try, the Dragons went to the break with a six-point lead, thrilling a full house. The Dragons extended their lead to 14 following a Mark Riddell try. Despite a late Brisbane fight back, the Dragons managed to hang on for a two-point victory. It's history making for us because it's the first time you know the joint ventures have beaten the Broncos. So, uh, I mean, it's it, it helps definitely helps our cause um, with regards to um, the end of season games. The win leaves the Dragons in seventh spot on the ladder. They face the Knights at Marathon on Friday night, followed by the Roosters and Bulldogs. Brett Rodwell, Win News. Meantime, Thoreau has stormed past Helensburg in the first Carlton League semi-final, 38-0. Fullback Luke McDonald starring for the Butchers, scoring tries and stopping them. The Tigers' season now over. Helensburg down Thoreau twice in their home and away games. The minor semi-final much different, however. Daniel Gunning set up the first try, his flat pass finding fullback Luke McDonald. The Butchers did exactly that to the opposition defence. Shane Skaberis using a dummy, speed and a swerve for his four-pointer. He made it a six-point play. The rule ahead, 14-0 after 17 minutes. The Tigers were already tired and it showed. It went from bad to worse for a side that had promised so much during the season. Helensburg needed to score first in the second half. McDonald saying no way. He was rock solid at the back, his team only going further ahead up front. Backline hands bringing applause for replacement Brendan Choice. Steelers SG ball talent David Howell came on as a replacement winger, the schoolboy finishing with a double. From the flanks to the front row, the rule finished with six tries. Ben Couchman getting the last in a 38-0 rout. The Butchers now to meet the loser of next Sunday's major semi-final, Dapto against Collegians. Still on league, Kiama's Stephen Ross scored two tries in a big win for the Australian schoolboys, 44-22 against the Great Britain Academy. Wollongong's Luke Doherty has finished eighth with the Australian Crocodiles at the World Under-22 Basketball Championships in Japan, the United States taking gold. Meantime, the championship winning Hawks are back in training, holding their first formal session of the season this afternoon. The club plans a busy pre-season, like last year, in a bid to repeat the successful start. Not all hands are on deck. Doherty and Axel Dench expected back within days. Ben Pepper within a fortnight. The first trial is away to Brisbane on Saturday week. Coldale's Karen McCann has finished second in the city to surf. Victorian Susie Power broke Lisa Ondiki's 1988 record by 39 seconds, winning in 45.08. McCann outside Ondiki's mark with 46.46. Vikings are still alive in Illawarra Rugby, downing Shoalhaven by 10. The Blues home on the back of two Mark Fisher tries. Vikings started best, a mountain of pressure made up mainly of one out rucking. When that changed, so did the scoreboard for the first time. Mark Fisher making it look easy as he stormed up the middle. The home side answered through its backline danger man. Tim Eddy playing inside centre and reaching over. An Eddy penalty goal gave Shoalhaven a 10-7 lead before Fisher gave everyone a feeling of deja vu. Vikings up 14-10 at half time. The lead changed again early in the second half. Shoalhaven winger Leith Cooper beating three players on his run to the line. Shoalhaven didn't celebrate for long, however. Tries to Murray McDonald and Daniel Lawson, sealing a 10-point win for Vikings. Shoalhaven, who finished fifth, 
the first to crash out. We've got a pretty young side and this year's just a bit of a rebuilding year, so hopefully we'll come back bigger and stronger next year. For Vikings, there's next week. The draw with minor Premier Campbelltown to play Shamrocks at Coromel on Saturday. Vikings to meet Tectars at Campbelltown on Sunday. I don't know, we haven't come been Tectars all year, but the finals, you know, it's a different sort of game. Warilla's Justin Goodwin is the Zone 16 champion of club singles champion. The Kiwi met fellow first-time finalist Peter Bott and went straight to an early lead. Goodwin's advantage blew out in the middle stages before Bott fought back, never able to take the lead, however. Goodwin holding on 31-18. Attention now turns to the champion of club champion pairs, the draw to be done today. It's AHA Cup Day at the Illawarra Turf Club tomorrow. The Kembla connection likes terrible Taurus, trained by Diane Lane and to be ridden by apprentice Luke Price. The eight race card starts at 12.46. The Wolves will get $1.5 million in compensation from FIFA for the World Club Championship collapse. It's nowhere near the $5 million they stood to earn, but they make money nevertheless, Jeff. A case of something better than nothing. Indeed. All the weather details after the break, then the glitter and glamour of the South Coast Dance Sport Championship. Only a trace of rain during the day, despite the dark clouds that rolled in. Looking at the satellite photo, scattered cloud along the coast and ranges, thanks to that high east of Tasmania. It's expected to ridge along the south coast tomorrow as it moves further east into the Tasman with showers contracting northwards. It should also continue to move north on Wednesday, ridging into the north coast as a cold front extends across the bite. Looking at today's temperatures, Wollongong peaked at 19, 2 to 14 at Barrel, 18 degrees for Nowra, Ulladulla and Batemans Bay, 19 degrees for Maria, Naruma and Bega and Marimbula, 5 to 18. The forecast for the Illawarra and the Highlands, a few early morning showers clearing, early morning fogs in the Highland areas. It will be cool to mild with light to moderate east to southeasterly winds. Ahead of us, fine Wednesday and Thursday, patchy rain on Friday. For the south coast, a few morning showers clearing to a cool, mild Tuesday with southeast to northeasterly winds. On the water, seas are running at one metre on a similar swell. The first tide tomorrow, a high at a quarter past three. The first low of the day at 9.08. Tomorrow's temperatures, Wollongong 11 to 19 degrees. Barrel 5 overnight to a top of 14. 6 to 17 for Nowra. 8 to 17 degrees for Batemans Bay and Bega 5 overnight to a top of 18. An Illawarra pair has scooped the pool at this year's South Coast Ballroom Dance Sport Championships, taking two of the top three awards, the rules Melanie Sears and Stephen Oliveri of Bosley Park. Wollongong Town Hall transformed into a stage as 120 couples took to the floor. As they showcased their fancy footwork, they proved just why it takes two to tango. For many years, the Illawarra has been known in ballroom dancing circles as the home of champions, and this year was no exception. It's future secure. The annual event has been staged in Wollongong for the past 35 years, attracting dancers from throughout the country. The youngest, nine years, the oldest, over 35. Spectator numbers hit an all-time high this year, topping 700. Catherine Lord, Wind News. And that is the news from across the region for this Monday night. I'm Jeff Phillips from the Wind News team. Good night. This has been a Wind News presentation from Australia's largest regional television network.